just going to cap it. I will not grind it right now. Here we go. Three, two, one, chopping. My research has focused on cannabis-infused chocolates, uh, specifically relating to trends in the sample prep and how it relates to the potency readings that we uh, record. I would say the takeaway is that the presence of chocolate in the vial can interfere with our ability to accurately test the amount of THC in that product, and that can be a negative for the consumer and for the producer. The chocolate bar might in reality have more cannabinoids than the lab finds, and thus the product might actually be overdosed uh, when it gets to the consumer's hands. This, there is a possibility that the customer might feel too high, but on the whole, the actual effect is probably not enough that it would make the difference between somebody having a good experience or needing to go to the emergency room. Lemon lilac, cheese nectarine, gelato 33, and strawberry banana. Yes, I don't think that this causes a substantial health risk to consumers, um, but I do think that uh, it might uh, affect their confidence they have in um, the legal market, and thus this science is important to establish the, the scientific legitimacy of the cannabis industry uh, in its nascent days. Ground up gummies. So you can see here it's nice and chunky. We are, uh, have a central homogenized uh, sample to pull from. A keef, roll, the joint is rolled in keef, which uh, bumps up the potency. No, I think it'll, it will bring confidence to the, to the whole industry because we're starting to learn more about what's really going on and now we're testing chocolate the right way to get the right values out of the matrix. So I'm more optimistic than pessimistic about it. Smells good. <laughs>